Hello everyone imagine a situation you have been given a homework of three different subjects let the subjects be operating system database management system and java operating system homework can be done in 1 hour dbms homework can be completed in 2 hours and java homework needs 1 and a half hour for completion now you cannot do more than one homework at a time unless you are some extraordinary kid you need to do one at a time Now you need to decide in which sequence or order you need to do the homework. You can decide let's complete the homework which takes less time and at last do the one which takes more time. Or you can simply reverse the order. Complete the homework which requires maximum time at the beginning. Or you can decide based on which is your favorite subject. Similarly, when we do multitasking on our laptops or computers, CPU needs to execute multiple processes. so how you select or schedule your homework similarly it is operating system's task to schedule which process will get executed by the cpu and how remaining processes will get scheduled for execution in short this is cpu scheduling let us understand the concept in depth In an Unix programming system like for example MS DOS the CPU starts executing a process out of many processes if that particular process needs some user input it will move out of CPU execution and go for IO execution or input output operation now until that process completes the IO the CPU will be idle doing nothing there are other processes in queue but it cannot go to next process until the current one is processed completely that is not the case with multi programming in multi programming operating system a cpu starts the execution of one process if that process needs some io operations it will get out of cpu execution for io operation now the cpu is idle but in multi programming another process will be sent for cpu processing the cpu will never remain idle in multi programming this task of keeping the cpu busy that means If a process is gone for IO operation then assigning CPU to another process that is ready for execution is called CPU scheduling a formal definition for CPU scheduling states CPU scheduling is a process that allows one process to use the CPU while another process is delayed for unavailability of resources or IO operations the purpose of this CPU scheduling is to make efficient and optimum use of the cpu so generally if we consider any process it needs both cpu execution and io execution and it is not as simple that it will complete all the cpu execution first and then complete all the io execution for example if you consider an atm process once you enter the card in atm the process starts it will first scan the chip on your card that is cpu execution then it will ask you the language that is an io execution as it is asking for input then once you enter the language it will process your response it will be again cpu execution then it will ask you for pin number that will be again io execution once you enter your pin it will verify and validate it that will be cpu execution then it will ask you to enter the amount which will be again io operation process the request and that will be again cpu execution then it will ask for slip that will be again io execution and then finally it will dispense the cash as well as slip so the process needs both cpu and io execution and at any point of time it may switch from one to another depending on the need of the program so normally processes will start with cpu execution followed by many changes from cpu to io and vice versa and also the process will end on cpu execution so what exactly is cpu bound or io bound let's examine using two different processes let us say we need to project something using the projector it will consist of less cpu execution that is for configuration or etc but it will have more of io execution as it is projecting something another example can be of a program you have written for complex computation 
It will initially ask for user input, maybe some variables or values, but it will spend most of its time on CPU execution to doing the complex computation. So this first process will have less CPU burst or CPU execution and more of IO burst or IO execution. The second process will have more CPU burst or CPU execution and less IO burst or IO execution. So any process having less CPU burst and more IO burst, that process can be categorized as IO bound process. And second process or any process having more CPU burst and less IO burst, that process can be categorized as CPU bound. So why do we categorize them? This helps in efficient scheduling. If all IO bound processes are scheduled together, CPU can remain idle or underutilized. Same will happen for opposite case. If all CPU bound processes are scheduled together, then IO devices will remain idle. So the categorization helps in scheduling equal proportion of CPU bound processes and IO bound processes so that every resource is utilized efficiently. So that's all about the introduction about CPU scheduling. Hope you got a clear idea about CPU scheduling. In upcoming videos, I will simplify more concepts related to the CPU scheduling and also CPU scheduling algorithms. So if this video helped you in clearing your concept or doubt, give it a like and share it with your classmates or friends. And for more such amazing videos, subscribe my channel Making IT Simple and press the bell icon to receive notifications when future videos get uploaded. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.